when we hear about Moshiach ben Dovid, alive from the dead, appearing, making resurrection appearances with the Tahiyas Hamasim, the resurrection of the dead, even to the Shulahim that were cowering behind locked doors, fearing for their lives, that they would be next, and that they would have to endure the same kind of suffering that he had endured just three days before. And now they're having these resurrection appearances. Well, to put flesh on the bones of what we're talking about, you have to go to the beginning of First Johannan. What was voracious in the beginning, which we have examined with our ears, which we have seen with our eyes, which we beheld, and the hands of us touched, the Devar HaChayim, the word of life. Indeed, the Hayye Olam was manifested, and we have seen, and we give solemn edis, that means witness of testimony, and we proclaim to you the Hayye Olam, which was alongside with Elohim Ha'av and made his galas, revelation to us what we have seen and what we have heard we proclaim also to you that you also may have devacus attachment to god with us and our devacus our attachment to god is with elohim ha'av and with the zun funderoibister moshiach yoshua yeshua and these things we write, that the simcha of us may be made shalima. Shalima means complete. So in this first paragraph, he's telling you what was witnessed in the upper room, what was heard, touched, and beheld, seen with their eyes. Now, apparently, these false prophets and false teachers that this letter addresses were not at all impressed with that. They thought that their knowledge and their uh, prophetic gifting was such that uh, they didn't have to feel at all second place to people like Yohanan, who at this point may be a very old man and who was right there and saw everything, witnessed everything. His eyewitness account ought to have some weight with people. But even today, people skim over this and it doesn't mean a thing to them. But if you look carefully at this book, you will see that a crisis has occurred. And it's actually in chapter 2, verse 19. It says, uh, it says, they went out and departed from us but they were not of us. For if they were of us, they would have abided with us. But they went out that it might be nigla, revealed, that none of them belonged to us. You see, when you are a false teacher and you come into the kehila and you begin to attract a certain number of people who want to hear your teaching, and then you begin to teach something else, something that contradicts what was seen and heard and beheld and touched by the eyewitnesses who were authorized. 
then when you do that, when you when you uh, begin to teach something else, and then all of a sudden you just walk out. You say, look, I hate you people. I'm not going to be around here anymore. I'm, I'm leaving. Then what happens is the, the some people who are disillusioned now because they thought you were a teacher, now they are confused. They don't know what the authoritative teaching is. And that's why Johanan had to write this little letter, which may have been published roughly at the same time his gospel was published. And this crisis that I'm talking about that was uh, registered in uh, First Johanna chapter 2, verse 19, uh, re re required Johanna to make some things straight. Those who refused to love the truth were believing a lie and were being deceived by a powerful spiritual delusion. Now, I have a little book here I used when I was preaching in England on the street. And I had little notes in the margin I had made to myself as I studied this book. And one of the things that I put in the margin was that the whole world, uh, the entire world was under a terrible delusion. Uh, a massive deception. And that's the way the world is. The world with its lust is passing away. The darkness of the world is passing away. And Johannan is fighting massive deception. And he's saying that uh, the, the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. And he's telling them, we have seen this, this light. And we know Hashem and his Zunfud Reibister. And we declare to you that you may know him as well. And have this Devekis attachment to God uh, being attached to us. And our attachment is to God. But if you turn away from us and you go out from us with these false teachers, then where is the hope of your salvation? These false prophets are uh, not ethical. They do not walk as Moshiach walked. And uh, they do not have love. And uh, they are not teaching the truth. They are liars. Who is a bigger liar than the man who says that Moshiach ben David is not the Moshiach? Uh, what a terrible thing. The one practicing Averos is of Hasatan. Because from the beginning, Hasatan sins. For this Taklis was made his scholars of the Ben Hayalokim. For this purpose was revealed the Zunfud Reibishter that he might destroy the Peolot Hasatan. First Johannin chapter. 3 verse 8 the works of the devil everyone having been born of Hashem is not practicing pet sin because his zera makes my own in him uh, in other words Moshiach is not just the zera ha'isha the seed of the woman he's also the seed of Hasatan of of Hashem, the seed of Hashem against Hasatan, and he makes his ma'on 
in the believer. And the believer cannot abide sinning because he's born of Hashem. And, and uh, this uh, is a, an allusion to Boratius chapter 3, verse 15. The Zarah HaIsha and the Zarah HaSatan. And uh, the false teachers have no love. They are devoid of the Ruach HaKodesh. Everyone with Imunah, with faith, that Yehoshua, Yeshua, is the Ribi Melech HaMoshiach, has been born of Hashem. And everyone having Ahava, having love for the one having begotten, has also Ahava for the one begotten by him. So, by this, we have Das, that we have love for the Yeladim of Hashem. When we have Ahavas Hashem, and we are Shomer over his mitzvot, over his commandments. And we have Da'as, we have knowledge that the Zun Fundaroibrister has come and has given us Bina, has given us, has, has given, given us Bina that we may have Da'as of the one who is the true one, the Omain. And we are in the one who is the Omain, even in Haben of him, Moshiach Yahushua. This one is the El Ha'amiti and Haye Olam. Yeladim, keep yourselves from Elilim. Lord, I want to pray that we will go back and reread this letter and meditate on it at a time when false prophets and cults and false religions are proliferating through the work of false workers, false prophets, false teachers. Oh God, at such a time when false messiahs are being uh, introduced and propagated, this is a time when we need to come back to First Johannan and read it again. Because he's giving you the authoritative teaching of the Shalahim. The ones who saw him alive. Can you imagine if you were fortunate enough to be in that room when Mashiach appeared? You might say, well, how fortunate would you be? Most of those people were martyred. Yes, that's true. They paid a price. But look at the glorious thing that was revealed to them. Look at what they touched with their hands and their eyes beheld. And they heard with their ears the word of life that was with Elohim Ha'av. The Bar Enosh who came from the Atik Yomin. The Zunfun Duroivishter. The one who has the words of eternal life. The one who can give you eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his Ben Yochid, so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have Haye Olam. Can you imagine? Yohanan was a fisherman, he and his brother. His brother was martyred. And the Lord kept him alive to write the Gospel of Yohanan, the Basurus Hageolah of Yohanan, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, uh, Igrot Kodesh of Yohanan, and the book of Hiskalis, or Revelation. So he lived probably to be a, a, a very old man. 
And on the island of Patmos, he was exiled. And there he saw the revelation and wrote it down. Now, this man is in a position to tell you how you can know that you have Haye Olam. And he does. In this letter, he tells you how you can know you have Haye Olam. He also tells you the kinds of things that can throw into question your assurance of Yeshua's Elokeinu, salvation. And he's warning especially about these false prophets. And in a world that is proliferating false religions and false teachings, oh, how important it is to cling to this book. When I was in England preaching on the street, this was a little Brit Hadishah, the uh, Novum Testamentum Greece, the uh, Greek Brit Hadishah. I had it in my hands. I meditated on it. I meditated on it all the time I was over there. And I had it in my hand when I would preach at Trafalgar Square, wherever I was. And although people would throw beer cans or whatever they did, I had the truth in my hands. And I had a certain assurance, a certain boldness in the Ruach HaKodesh to preach this book. And, oh, God, we thank you for those days, and we ask you, Lord, to give us more days like that. Even in Brooklyn, even in the United States. And, oh, God, we pray right now for anyone who doesn't know you, that they will receive you tonight, that they will be convicted of their sins, that they will pray, Moshiach ben Dovid, I am a sinner. I need salvation by grace through faith. I cannot depend on mitzvahs or my religiosity or my knowledge of certain holy books. Or Sheikh Ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life. And everybody said, Amen.